Good evening. I'm Elaine Corral. Dennis Richmond is off tonight. Guess what's on the way? Another storm. Actually, another major storm. Rain in the Bay Area may be heavy at times tomorrow, while in the Sierra, a winter storm watch is in effect for tomorrow night. George Watson took a trip to the Sierra today and is standing by right now alongside Highway 80 with a live report. George. Well, Elaine, right now it is crystal clear, very cold, but there are stars in the sky. But earlier today, it gave uh, Caltrans crews a chance to clean off the highway and basically get ready for the storm that is expected to hit either later tonight or early tomorrow morning. It gave people a chance to finally either get out of the area or get to where they wanted to go. Because as you remember, last week's major storm shut down all three major highways that headed into the mountains. And now another fierce storm is expected to hit tonight. Now, there is a possible tragedy here. Three people are missing. On December 29th, James Fatola, uh, his wife, Amy, and their four-year-old son, Clayton, left for Idaho to go to a funeral. He is an Army private stationed at Camp Roberts in Southern California. They have not been seen since they left. The Red Cross has no reports on their whereabouts. Now, farther north from here, an estimated 300 cars, unoccupied, hopefully, are buried under the snow. Now, Caltrans trucks have actually been running into these cars. That's how they've been finding them while they've been trying to clear the roadway. It is hoped that these people have made it to their destination, made it to Idaho, and they just don't know that people are looking has been missing since December 29th. Now, tomorrow, we're, head, we're staying here tonight, and we're heading up north tomorrow to where all those cars are buried and where, if the storms hit, if the storm does hit, all the expected problems will occur. This will be north, north of here on Highway 80. Elaine? George, thanks very much for that live report. Last weekend, Sierra storm almost cost a California man his life. Southern California physician Dale Ellis spent almost 12 hours stuck alone in the snow after he slipped while skiing near Tahoe. He had fallen down a steep ravine near the boundary of the Diamond Peak Ski Resort Saturday afternoon and could not get out. After rescuers found him, Ellis talked about fighting to stay alive just a few feet from the rope boundary of the ski run. I was right around the rope, but then I kind of slid out because it was... I'm not that great of a skier. As I tried to turn that towards the rope, I kept going down. I took my skis out, but I was, I was going to crawl, try and crawl back up. I couldn't go up. And I was screaming at people. I was going, help, help. But then I could see him, and it just... Nobody, nobody, I, I couldn't... I don't know if anybody heard me. The Tahoe Nordic Search and Rescue Unit from Truckee found Ellis's abandoned skis and his tracks. The tracks led down the mountain. Rescuers found Ellis near the bottom of the mountain less than an hour later. Despite the sub-zero temperatures, he was treated for only minor frostbite and released. Here in the Bay Area, it was bitter cold this morning. How bitter cold was it? Lloyd LaQuesta will tell us. Though perhaps more to the point, he'll show us. Bay Area motorists who left their cars outside overnight had to do some windshield scraping this morning. It was the coldest morning in the Bay Area in two years. Temperatures dipped down into sub-freezing teens in some areas. On Highway 17 in the Santa Cruz Mountains, traffic was slow because Caltrans was putting sand on a section of the roadway, where a motorist last night skidded over a patch of black ice, lost control, and hit an oncoming car, killing the driver of that car. At an intersection off Summit Road in the Santa Cruz Mountains, flowing water had created a section of black ice. One resident was surprised that the ice hadn't melted by noon. If it gets freezing, this is uh, common for out here uh, in this particular intersection. Uh, it's always wet after a rain, uh, for a week or two after, the, after a rain. And this is the first time I've seen this much ice on, on the road. Black ice is dangerous for cars. It's just as dangerous for pedestrians as I unexpectedly demonstrated on the new news today. That's what happens. And while I survived that, many people are afraid their plants won't survive such chilly nights. Experts advise that covering your plants with burlap or plastic will keep them warm. While the coal has many people scurrying to try and cover up their plants, there are some farmers who just love the cold weather. John Olson was tending to cherry trees in Sunnyvale today. Olson says there's nothing better than freezing winter weather for cherries and other deciduous fruit. The cold weather helps put the trees to sleep. Uh, without the cold weather, the trees cannot go dormant or go to sleep, and therefore when the springtime comes, 
they don't know when to bloom. But with the cold weather, uh, approximately uh, 30 days, uh, 30 nights rather, of 32 degrees, puts the trees in the dormant cycle so they come out in the early spring or late February in a full bloom. And that's what you're looking for in, in raising cherries. But 30 nights of freezing temperatures may not be possible. Warmer weather is in the forecast. Lloyd LaQuesta for the 10 o'clock news. With all the snow and all the rain we've had and more headed our way, using the word drought may seem like a bad joke. But the fact is, if we were suddenly to get enough precipitation to end the effects of six years of drought, we'd be facing floods of historic proportions. John Fowler is in Oakland with a live report on where we actually stand in terms of our water supply. John. Thanks very much, Elaine. If uh, the water that most of us here in the Bay Area will be drinking uh, to next year, tonight is up in the Sierra. Uh, the uh, Sierra snowpack is on average one and a half times normal, although it's colder and drier than normal. It's the deepest in nine years. That's perfect for skiers. And looking at all this snow, you might think the drought is behind us, but National Weather Service experts today said, think again. It's taken a long time for California to get this dry, and our water troubles won't be over anytime soon. Six years is a long time to be in a drought and it will take a lot more precipitation than uh, we have seen so far. In other words, the month of December needs to be continued uh, into the future uh, before that's, uh, uh, the, the drought is really alleviated. State water officials tonight say the snowpack water content stands at a third more than normal for this time of year. That amounts to 60% of the entire expected season total, as much as we got all of last year. Maybe we shouldn't say drought so much as water shortage. What counts is the water that makes it into reservoirs, and that's where we're short. The dry soil will soak up much of what melts, so experts figure there's still not enough water to bring reservoirs to where they should be. Although water officials say coming storms could actually overflow Central Coast reservoirs. And despite the abundance of snow and rain we have now, we may see less of this the rest of the year. The National Weather Service today made its long-term prediction for western states for less than normal precipitation. I know people are getting, oh God, this guy is here, he goes again, but it, it's, still, it's still early. I mean, it's only you know, the first part of January. We've got another four months that are really the heart of the precipitation period in California. And if those should not materialize, we still are we still have serious problems state water resources technicians took one snow sample yesterday they'll be taking another sample tomorrow that one will be for the central sierra which officials say is somewhat less important for overall water supplies all in all now weather service people and the uh, state the department of water resources officials are telling us that it will take two more winters like this before they'll be willing to declare the drought officially over. Elaine? John Fowler in Oakland. Thanks very much, John. Straight ahead tonight on the 10 o'clock news. Less than two hours from now, just after midnight, the state of Washington is scheduled to hang a man to death. Outside the state penitentiary, anti-death penalty demonstrators have gathered since yesterday despite heavy snowfall. If it happens, Wesley Allen Dodd will become the first person executed by hanging in this country since 1965. Earlier today, the Washington State Supreme Court rejected a lawsuit filed by 26 residents who argued that hanging is unconstitutionally cruel and unusual punishment. Dodd was convicted of killing three young boys back in 1969. The youngest of the boys was four-year-old Lee Isley. Isley was sexually molested, tortured, and then hanged. Dodd could have chosen to die by lethal injection, but he chose hanging. Hanging, that's the way I'm going to go. I'm going to hang because that's the way Lee Isley died. I don't think I deserve a neat, clean, painless little death. No, I mean, that's not the way Lee Isley died. Uh, anyway. Death by hanging remains legal in Washington, Montana, Delaware, and New Hampshire. We've been getting a lot of calls into our newsroom about a small earthquake that occurred about 10:15 tonight. We've contacted UC Berkeley, and experts right now are trying to pinpoint exactly where the epicenter was of that earthquake. They believe it occurred along the Hayward Fault. As soon as we have more information, of course, we'll bring it to you. The cold weather we're experiencing here in the Bay Area is really nothing compared to what people in Europe are feeling. A Siberian chill has been hanging over most of France since before Christmas. 
Temperatures in Paris dropped into the teens today, and the homeless have been suffering and nine people have died. For the first time this season, officials opened a subway station for the homeless all night long. A group of doctors criticized the government for not coming up with an acceptable plan to house the homeless. And in Italy, people are digging out from one to two to three feet of snow in the southern part of the country, which normally has very mild weather. There are also record low temperatures. Local officials today declared their areas disasters as they tried to clear the snow. At least one airport reopened, but others remain closed tonight. Well, we have weather all around mm. the world, and certainly it's been cold here in the Bay Area. Pat joins us now. Lots of weather yeah. off the coast, too. To the north of us, to the south of us. Coming at us from both directions. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sky of the Bay Area right now, depending on where you are, is either mostly clear or partly cloudy with increasing clouds. Uh, the temperature here at Jack London Square, a nippy 43 degrees, and the barometer 30 and 3 one hundredths inches of mercury. Last night, temperatures ranged from the mid-20s to the mid-30s. Uh, in fact, there were lots of teens in some of those sheltered valleys here and there. This afternoon, the highs ranging from a 46 up at Santa Rosa, San Rafael, to about a 55 in uh, Fremont, most below normal. Santa Rosa was 10 degrees below normal. Around the state, Sacramento 45, looks like a rainy 45 tomorrow. Los Angeles 61, and it looks like a rainy 61 tomorrow. Lots of weather in the Pacific today. A cold Arctic air mass up here, a tropical storm down here. Cold rain falling as far south tonight as the Golden Gate Bridge. That's from something in the north of us. Wait till I tell you about what's down in the south of us getting ready to come up. Just off the coast, uh, there's some rain ready to hit Santa Barbara in just about six, seven hours from right now. It's the combination of cold air over Northern California and this little front that's working just to the north of us with the mild, moist tropical air coming up from the southwest is going to give us some heavy Bay Area rain probably starting late tomorrow sometime. Uh, the, the, heavy, uh, the heavy rain will be down in the south uh, Bay counties because this whole thing will be coming up from the north. And more heavy, wet snow in the Sierra. That'll be coming in uh, late tomorrow afternoon or tomorrow night. Now, the high pressure is well out of the way, and the split jet stream is creating the kind of dynamics that could produce up to three inches of rain in the Los Angeles area. As I say, the storm will be approaching from the south, so we expect the most rain in the south bay, maybe one or two inches. Uh, that's late tomorrow. In the meantime, we could get some cold, freezing rains up in the North County from that little cold front that's uh, sitting on top of us. Well, let's take a quick look at um, Lake Tahoe tonight. It's right under there. We may not get to see the lake on a satellite uh, for a little while. There uh, will be a winter storm watch in effect, and that could be upgraded to a storm warning at any time. So you uh, mountain travelers, beware of that. Let's see, do we have time for a little bit of uh, a look at the national weather? What's our time situation? Good. Uh, on the national weather scene, uh, strong thunderstorms in the east causing three to four inches of rain in just three hours in southeastern Arkansas. Strong winds in Texas blowing down trees and signs. Plain Dealing, Louisiana reporting 64 mile an hour winds. And while all this was happening, several no injury tornadoes hitting down near Lakeland, Florida. Well, 40s, 50s, and 60s on the East Coast, uh, where it'll be kind of warm. Uh, 30s and 40s on the West Coast tonight. Tomorrow, the highs start below zero in northern Montana, warming up to an expected 80 degrees down in, in uh, Miami. We didn't see that graphic, but believe me, it's going to be warm in Miami. Here's our Bay Area forecast then. Uh, North uh, Bay counties, chance of freezing rain. That would be in some of those sheltered areas. Elsewhere, variable clouds, mid-20s low 40s. Then tomorrow, rain is very likely by the afternoon hours. This will be the rain that's coming up from the south, upper 40s and 50s, gusty southeasterly winds. And looking ahead, we have uh, moisture in the air. Uh, probably, we'll, we, we may get a little break there on Friday, but we could have rain here in the Bay Area on and off through the weekend. So lots more weather to keeping you busy. Remember when it was fog along the coast, sunny inland? Yeah, those days? fog in the morning, sun in the <laughs> afternoon. Okay, thanks very much, Pat. You're BART ended the year carrying more passengers than ever before, but also by suffering its worst derailment in history. Last month's derailment injured 13 passengers, damaged four cars, and led BART officials to say the 20-year-old system needs hundreds of millions of dollars worth of work. Vern Hawkins reports on BART safety and BART maintenance.
Richmond, one of four maintenance yards, keeps shift workers on duty around the clock to keep an aging system patched together. Car number 552, one of Bart's original B cars. It's traveled more than a million miles. 590 of these cars, three quarters of the fleet, are 20 years old. They come in for maintenance every 550 hours of service. That's more often than their newer counterparts. This one gets new floor panels. The originals were rusted and corroded around the doors. Bart wants to rebuild these original cars. That would cost around $400 million Bart doesn't have. But it would keep these cars going another 20 years. As it is now, old cars need more repair. We will see uh, some cracks in the, in the roof panels, uh, some corrosion on the floor panel, and some wiring problems. But uh, you're saying the car's still safe even with that? Oh, absolutely. There's no, no question in my mind. The cars are safe. Um, when they come in, they're thoroughly checked out, and we don't put a car out unless it meets all our standards. Car number 402, a C car, three years old, gets checked out every 600 hours. Pretty routine stuff, sort of like servicing the family car, although interiors show wear for more and more passengers. This shop works over some 400 cars a month. Usually, they're back on track in eight hours. More passengers climb on board each year. Most aware of recent mishaps, still feel confident. I feel pretty safe. You do? Mm-hmm. And I look at it as being one of those things that, you know, just yeah, happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel a lot safer on Bart than I would on a freeway when one wreck every how many years uh, where somebody gets hurt compared to every day on the freeway. Bart officials insist the system's safe, but agree that age takes a toll and that the cost of keeping an old fleet running takes a toll on the budget. In Richmond, Vern Hawkins for the 10 o'clock news. And coming up on the 10 o'clock news, a new and revealing video is out featuring none other than the teenager known as Long Island Lolita. We'll be right back. Bus. Last night looked like the end of the Amy Fisher Film Festival. You know, the story of the so-called Long Island Lolita. Two of the three big networks aired their version Sunday night. The other ran earlier. No, it's not over. Another Amy Fisher video has now surfaced. And as Eric Sean reports, the alleged victims in the case say they're sick of it, but they're still talking. I don't think it'll ever end with her. I really don't. One after another. It's yeah. just another face of Amy Fisher, like Sybil. Even Joey and Mary Jo Buttafuoco are fed up with the Amy Fisher story. It's the day after their unprecedented double header of network TV movies, and Amy is in the headlines again. Her latest claim to fame, undressing herself on yet another homemade sex video. Are we taping? Yes, Amy. The tape is rolling. And millions of people have seen this strip tease courtesy the tabloid TV show Hard Copy. There are things that are newsworthy and there are things that are not. Somebody's private conversations, a videotape of someone's private bedroom activity, is that person's business. Uh, it's grotesque. It's just absolutely grotesque. Guys. While Amy's lawyer, Eric Nyberg, denounced hard copy for showing the tape, Amy's victim angrily says it again reveals the troubled girl that Amy is. Yeah, it seems like it never ends. In one way, it's a little redundant because it's a, another sex tape of Amy Fisher. Uh, but on the other hand, what, what is it going to take for people to see that this is a very sick, sick girl? I just don't think that you're ever going to figure out Amy Fisher. I don't think anybody's going to figure that mess out. Are you getting sick of all the attention? Yes, I am. Yeah, I really am. Yeah. Uh, we were very private people, Mary Jo and I, and the kids. Very private. And all that's out in the open now, you know? With the movies now finished and Amy in prison, the Butterfucos hope to resume their normal life. But they are now national household names and they know they can never revert to the anonymity of before the shooting, no matter how hard they try and put this case behind them. I'm Eric Sean, Fox News, Massapequa, Long Island. And before we say goodnight, a lot of people called to our newsroom tonight saying they felt what they thought was an earthquake at about 10.15 this evening. We contacted seismologist Dr. Robert Urhammer at UC Berkeley and told him about those calls. He looked at his seismograph and said, sure enough, there was a small earthquake in the Bay Area at about 10.15, but so far, that's all he's been able to determine. We've heard no reports of any damage at all from this small earthquake tonight.
That is our report for tonight. Thank you very much for joining us. For Dennis Richmond, everyone here at KTVU, I'm Elaine Corral. Our next newscast is mornings on 2, beginning at 7 a.m., and then the 10 o'clock news.